PowerPoint demonstration using um, anti-traditional materials. And um, if you look across here, you can see this absolutely magnificent oak tree, which will be several hundreds of years old. So this is the tree I'm going to be drawing today. So um, the materials I've chosen are oak charcoal. This is from uh, an oak tree and it was made in a fire, so it's completely homemade. It's fantastic to draw with. And I've got willow charcoal, finer marks. And I've got a variety of um, lump clays and ochres, okay. And I've also got um, casein fixative. And casein fixative is made of uh, a milk byproduct, so it's completely natural and it was used by some of the greatest artists, uh, people like Renoir and Pissarro, uh, Van Gogh, um, probably most, well, all of them would have used it in fact. Um, and I will be doing some demonstrations on some uh, shorter clips that you can see uh, so i'm going to show you how to make some of this yourself and also how to make your own oak gall ink so that's another reason why i've chosen to draw an oak tree today okay so um, i thought it would be fun to just go up to the tree have a close look at it because that's what i like to do before i start drawing get to know the trees and uh, so, you know, looking up into the branches, you can see how absolutely enormous it is. And uh, the girth of the tree. I mean, I know that there's a way of working out the age of these trees. You know, if I came back maybe with a, a tape measure or a piece of string, I could, I could work it out. Who knows, maybe 500 years old, I would say. And, you know, this is what attracts me to these really old trees. And, you know, some of the branches have split off. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous and come out with all its beautiful leaves. So it's a lovely sort of fresh green. So, I've decided to take a step back from this tree and see if I can actually put uh, the, the whole sort of shape of it in onto this sheet of paper. So I'm drawing on handmade paper. It's actually Indian paper. It's, um, it's called Cardi and I really like it because it's got a bit of texture. It's made from recycled cotton. Um, so the way I start is I take some charcoal and what I like about uh, this particular um, raw uh, homemade oak charcoal is that you can make very direct and uh, you know interesting marks that are, that are almost sort of blocking in the tree, the shape of the tree. Um, and another thing that you can do is you can use a viewfinder. So you can hold it up and you can decide exactly which bit of the tree you want to focus on. Whether you want to focus on, you know, maybe a, a close-up. So that could be another option for drawing at some point. Okay. So you've got this lovely round shape in the, in the trunk of the tree. So um, I'm going to begin the drawing like this so I'm sort of centering it if you like okay so you can see very slowly I'm starting to build some of the shapes and I forget to talk <laughs> because I get so engrossed in it. <laughs> so that's how I'm going to develop this drawing. Okay, 
because I want to get the movement. Um, you know, I, I'm sort of almost treating it like a, a, a stone sculptor would. Okay, so I'm also thinking about the negative space. That's very important. So some of these shadows can become a key part of it. And uh, some of these could be put in about now. I mean, quite lightly. I'm going to use a brush. And I'm going to start by fixing and it dries pretty quickly and you can build up layers you see and uh, the casein is incredibly strong and it's also believe it or not uh, water resistant. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to introduce some of this colour, some of these lovely um, clays. Okay, this is a red bowl. Um, so see what a lovely colour it is, and also just a touch of the yellow ochre is quite um, potent. This very strong so um, it's quite good just introducing a little bit of highlight and then I'll just fix it again I don't want to overwork it. I'm just trying to capture some kind of essence of this beautiful oak tree. <coughs> so this this one is Verona Green. It's quite a subtle green, but I'm just going to introduce some of it. often ask how can um, how can they draw trees? Well my answer is to look for the patterns and the shapes and think about the negative spaces and also you know when you're drawing trees to see them as big clumps if you like big clumps shape abstract shape and try not to be too twiddly and detailed about it. We don't, we don't see all the detail when we're looking at trees. Um, you know, you can introduce the small areas of detail, which adds interest to it, but try and maybe keep the shapes more sort of uh, simplified, which is exactly what Turner did, for example. Um, and again, many of, of those great artists. Um, so perhaps there might be some small 
details that catch your eye that just seem to somehow enhance the character of the tree. Um, and, uh, you know, I tend to draw in a very intuitive <coughs> uh, way. And, uh, you know, it's sort of like going on a bit of an adventure, really, uh, with, with the eye, where you're sort of connecting your, your hand and your eye. Um, while you're, while you're drawing, so just try to spend as, as little time as possible actually looking at your piece of paper and you're trying to focus as much of your gaze as possible on the tree while you're drawing. I think that's the trick to good drawing. And perhaps not being afraid to fix as well, knowing that you can't uh, erase what you've just drawn. So it sort of keeps you on your toes, if you like. So this is going to take a while to develop. Um, so I'm going to, I think I'm going to knock in a bit more colour into this area here. So the other thing is, once you start fixing layers, um, it enables you to then um, really work into the darks and, and really bring them up, which you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. So I'm going to fix this again. So you can see it's starting to take shape. So I've done quite a lot to the drawing, but um, I could spend another three or four hours on it before it's completely finished. Um, so what I want to do now is I want to just work on some areas of um, foliage, leaves, just to show you how I might approach it. Um, so I'm going to look at some of the areas in shadow and also the areas with, with light on them. And to me, these are like big sort of almost triangular blocks of form really. So I'm going to just um, work on this bit here. Uh, so literally I'm seeing it as a big triangle starting from here. And uh, so I'm gonna go up into this branch here. 
So, so it's very much about looking at, uh, again, the negative space. Okay. Um, negative space, looking at shapes. Okay, so that's how I would approach this. And, you know, looking at uh, the forms that appear um, and then you know you can sort of pick out areas that suggest uh, sort of leaf formations if you like rather than actually doing every single individual leaf so again it's looking at the tree much more than I'm not I'm hardly looking at the paper at all because if I do that I start making it all up which I don't want to do and I want it to be very intuitive and you know uh, as as an, as honest and a, a response as I possibly can make it um, So very much seeing lots of little triangular shapes. So the whole area could be developed like that, as you can see. Like that. And it starts slowly to take form. And then here we've got some it's also looking inside the form not just drawing a line all the way around but actually looking at the if you like the solidity of it so you can see um, it's also sort of got a sense of the tree searching towards light Uh, those are sort of the growing patterns of the tree as a living thing and you can you can start to sort of pick up on those while you're drawing so moving across So you've got a, a sort of rounded area here, really. So how to describe that? Again, looking at those little individual shapes. But of course, that's slightly more further away, isn't it? So. You know, you've got you've got sort of uh, gaps, haven't you? So the background is showing through those little gaps. So so if you if you think of how um, for example Turner drew trees he didn't draw every single leaf you know he was just picking out shapes much as I'm doing so, you know, it's, it's Impressionism, really. So I'm going to use some of the oat gall ink that I made. 
um, just to add some touches, uh, mainly to the shadows. And it doesn't matter if it runs, because that's going to add something to it. So I just need to add a bit more so you can sort of see what it looks like. It's quite granular actually, um, because I didn't grind it that finely, but I like that, okay? But I have made another batch that's much finer. Um, so you can sort of make it however you like. And in fact, this tree, it reminds me of uh, a painting by Sam Samuel Palmer. I know he loved to paint oak trees. Um, and I'm not worried about splashes and things because I think it sort of adds to it really. You know, like this. You can see it's quite delicate, beautiful. It's that sort of daffled effect. Let's see. I know. You can just keep on building layers. And hopefully that's given you a good idea of how you can approach drawing trees. <laughs> 